डॉक्टर देवी यू नो वीव जस्ट गॉन थ्रू अ पेंडेमिक एंड देर हैव बीन ऑल काइंड ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन फ्लोटिंग अराउंड एंड यूजली नॉट कमिंग फ्रॉम एक्सपर्ट्स बट आई वॉन्ट टू वैलिडेट दिस दैट आर पेशेंट्स पोस्ट कोविड मोर प्रोन टू अरेदमियाज see we look at simply in that way that uh, any viral infection which affects the heart also yeah, means i am talking of general population not who are already having a risk factor for the heart disease or having heart disease because the people who are having heart disease or having risk factor for heart disease they can have arrhythmias even with a normal viral infection any infection but even people who are not uh, suffering from any of these things if there is a viral infection especially if it affects the heart and uh, it's a new virus so it's also finding its feet in the body you don't know where to attack where not to attack so post covid yes the incidence of uh, arrhythmias in those people have increased simply because it's a viral illness which has affected the heart also to some extent and then this virus has affected not only the direct myocardium of the heart or the pericardium the coverings of the heart but you know causing the clotting in the system causing stroke also creating stress on the heart so because of the number of cases in a pandemic and affecting the heart directly indirectly the arrhythmia incident increased the question is for how long it will remain high in these patients we are still finding out that's that's a specific answer to your question anything you want to add any of you like uh, two type of uh, things are coming in the post covid uh, or uh, during covid one is a tachycardia another is a bradycardia so most commonly tachycardia majority of them are uh, having the sinus tachycardia which persists for uh, for maybe months together like myself uh, i had a covid bad covid and this tachycardia was going on 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 maybe 3 months plus 5% of the patients they are presenting with the bradyarrhythmia means uh, low heart rate some of them are having transient 2 is to 1 block fortunately uh, in my experience i want to share with you all, all of you that majority of them are self recovery maybe after 2 months 3 months 4 months they are okay so and apart from that some patients are having atrial fibrillation that is a problem i don't know how many of uh, them are recovering after this covid and but my patient who had the transient atrial fibrillation measured all of all of them are recovered so i don't know about the ventricular tachycardia because uh, maybe they had this type of thing may not reach to the hospital so uh, but tachycardia bradyarrhythmia is arrhythmia, very common tachycardia is most common bradyarrhythmia is re- relatively uncommon but bradyarrhythmia symptoms are much more the patients are some of them are having giddiness some of them are having uh, like lethargy weakness profound weakness type of things actually what happens that when you use this uh, pulse oximeter your q or do you use the uh, bp apparatus to look into your heart rate many time what happen the patient has ectopics so falsely it comes as a bradycardia i mean comes as a low heart rate so they get very much worried ki mera heart to 36 dikha raha hai 40 dikha raha hai i was low but actually it is normal because when we look into the ecg you show there a lot of ectopics there extra beats are there which are not measured or picked up by the instrument so it gives you so those type of things which we observed a lot during the covid time and i agree with him the tachycardia was the most common thing and the bradycardia was there also in some group of population younger population no doubt in that so those uh, things were there but fortunately they were uh, <coughs> patients who had uh, moderate to severe covid moderate to severe covid for them we recommend that uh, after their recovery after about two months time they should have their echo and ecg so if the echo is normal after two months of recovery then is a reasonable assurance that heart has been spared is fine and in fact patient recovered from covid they should not start exercise till they are cleared by the doctor i am not talking about mild covid where you don't have to get admission or saturation never fell down that's okay they can do whatever you want but any patient where the saturation occurred they had to be admitted or they had a severe covid these patient must be have a cardiac check up two months post uh, recovery to know that the heart is affected by the virus or not so as far as yeah so just put few more points that you know sinus tachycardia or normal fast heart rate means you no know, rhythm is normal but heart rate faster has been the most common and a uh, lot of cases were thought to having a 
you know subclinical or we can say very minimal myocarditis inflammation and some cardiac markers were positive but many of them did not have it so it's a bit of a new entity a lot of people have persist, persisted for months together and few of them have comes down within a month or two the more severe form of arrhythmias are one where the heart is much more involved or people are having a bad lung you know damage so hypoxia and then uh, subsequent uh, issue causing the fast heart rate Uh, some cases are because of the clotting in the blood system by the virus and causing the damage to the heart in a secondary manner the another peculiar thing is not only the virus but the vaccines have caused similar effect in some of the cases mrna vaccine have known to cause myocarditis and pericarditis causing fast heart rate in normal fast sinus tachycardia means uh, normal rhythm and atrial fibrillation and few of the vaccines which have been used in india uh, have been known to cause in european studies uh, clotting like uh, virus causes and then again cardiac damage and so it's not only the virus and pandemic the vaccines also to some, some extent have caused this so whenever we had such history where we find the covid negative but we ask the history of the vaccination also but but the technology in fact which we use during covid time besides the arrhythmia and all that is the technology really helped us to manage patient during covid when our clinics were not open you see i'll give you example of my own hospital and ourselves we have a application called software called my follow up which we developed 4 years ago for our outstation patients because we used to have a lot of patient coming from the neighboring states and all that they can't come back again for follow up so we made that my follow up system very simple method where patient can log in and send all his upload all his investigations write his history everything and he can call us convenient time he can take the appointment with us payment can be done and then we have a video call and we can discuss with the patient and we can upload the prescription sign application to that so that was it takes 5 to 10 minutes minimum to for that this technology which this technology was really of great help during the covid even my neighbor was on my that line he could manage me through that only so that that how it happened so this is how we could see 40 to 50 patients a day uh, by this method Uh, every day from all over the country no this so, is this is very beautiful thing that you brought up sir uh, you know like you said it takes about 5 to 7 minutes uh, but it saves you 45 minutes of driving time yes yes and then saves you further waiting in the hospital etc 